Okay, I have two games I recorded last night. I don't remember the contents of them. Those are the first two, and two that I record are set to record rather today uh, that I know are very cool. I'm hoping the last two are as well. Fairly confident they would be, since I generally don't keep uh, games that don't hold any interest. So my opponent was playing the Mimeoplasm, and I'm playing uh, Edric, of course. I've made one change to the deck, and I'll bring it up at the end of the video. I'll show you the deck list and discuss that change. Uh, let me go ahead and just turn off Magic Volume. And so this was obviously a keeper, first turn Sylvan, right? And looks like my hand is going to be at the bottom of the screen, but my permanence will be up at top. So I go first turn Sylvan. Since he didn't have a um, turn one Soul Ring, I figure I can go ahead and get rid of Nature's Claim and then just hope he doesn't play a Sylvan of his own. And he hymns me, hitting the rift, but not the orb in the cradle. So, get down with Edric. And he plays an arena, not a problem. Now I'm kind of missing the uh, claim, but that's alright. So I'm able to ramp up into crazy vault, <laughs> vault, elf, lotus, orb, draw, and boom, he gives up. So... Just more reasons why I think, uh, I, I guess this deck, w this game was recorded just to show why I really like Fault, Lotus, and uh, Mox. Um, interestingly, Cryptic is the card that I have replaced. But we'll see how things would have worked out at the end when I show you what I've replaced it with, if it doesn't come up sooner. So, the second game I had for recording... Oh, I, I see. Edric vs. Edric mirror match. So again, I'll be at the top of the screen. And I kept this somewhat slow hand here, and look what he's got. Crazy amounts of ramp. So I kill Rafaelis and get down with the elf. And he's uh, looking at <coughs> six mana next turn. And now he's looking at four to my three, which is not too bad. So I'm able to get down with my commander. He ramps some more, and I trade Edric for Edric, and boom. So, my opponent has an insane start, going first, Edric on Edric, Soul Ring into Signet, Bounce Land is Commander, all that. I play a Wasteland in a Natural Order, and reduce him to a Forest, and he is behind, even though he started out with uh, f 5, 6 mana. He's actually losing this game. How cool is that? So I send in Trastodon because I don't want him to get enough mana to play his commander and then send in like three elephants, I block one and he draws two cards, potentially drawing like a, a theft spell or something for Trastodon, or even just to have him happen to top deck a bounce or theft spell and then suddenly I'm, I'm screwed. Uh, at this point, Trastodon's done his main work and I just want to trade him off if he will allow me, which he does. Um, it's also why I tapped out so that he could see there was no giant growth or trick coming. I really wanted him to block there. That's why I tapped out before combat, rather. So he starts recovering. And I get my commander down. He's uh, one turn away. And look at this. He's got Sword of Fire and Ice and a creature. So he should be able to win this game is probably what he's thinking. Which would be awesome after the uh, play that I made for him to recover that well. I've got a GTA. And there's no help for it. And suddenly <laughs> he goes off on some rant uh, about um, you're such a fag. How does it feel to be... S and I so I said, how does it feel to get screwed by a fag? <laughs> and he calls me cheap. And I'm like, well, you're playing Sword of Fire and Ice. And he's complaining about GTA. And I said, it's a good card, and if you aren't using it, you should. He calls me more epithets. And I said, as if I'm going to let you win, I'm not your friend, I'm your opponent. Heck with your land. And, uh... And, uh... And then he uh, tried to play a timeout game with me. See, you can see, like, ten minutes almost disappear on the clock, but he finally comes back. And, um... calls me a joke. Uh, 
I actually use the time to <laughs> give my son a bath. Uh, and it's funny, I said he has a weird way of insulting me, telling me the various ways that I've beaten him. For some reason, it doesn't make me feel so bad. And then I go AFK again and come back. And uh, and I let him know. The funny thing, the irony here is that um, I was impressed with his deck. I thought he had a great start. And uh, I, I very rarely see Edric decks actually do this, you know, ramp with a mixture of artifact and creatures. I think it's right. Uh, so uh, I was planning to um, add him, like, to my buddy list instead of blacklisting him. But, um... He asked me if I feel good buying my win. I'm like, I'm playing a collectible card game. Of course, I. Of course, that's how. You, that's exactly what you do. You try to buy your win, and your opponent should be doing the same thing. And then when we both do the same thing, you're good to go. But um, yeah, <sighs> whatever. So that was game two. Uh, hopefully, I didn't waste too much of your time watching that. Game three. Um, now these were the two games for today, and I think they're pretty awesome. I remember, actually, was this game today? No, this was yesterday. It's the last game that was from today, and it is awesome. So I mulligan twice, a third time, a fourth time. Okay, mulligan to three against Black Red, going second, and drawing a cradle with no creatures. My opponent distresses me, so I've I've mulligan to two now, and cradle isn't really a card until I get a creature, so it's almost it's almost a mulligan to one in a sense, um, unless that cradle turns on. So in order to just dig for a way to get the cradle active, I remand. And I don't find a specific way to get it active, but I, other than getting my commander down, I don't find a creature. But I do have mana drain, and I, I did think about like mana draining here, but um, I felt that I needed to get Edric down um, because and then, and then untap. I just needed it to work out. I needed to play him and have him not kill my guy. Turns out he's got removal, so now I decide, okay, that's it for tapping out. He goes for top. And uh, I can't I can have a War Marshal in play because it's too many creatures for him, for me to have to swim through, so I counter it. And really, like, I mean, I'm really just kind of crossing my fingers and hoping to draw something good. It's, it's a terrible strategy, but um, I don't draw anything good. However, I can develop. It gives me enough mana to develop, so... And I kind of figured either way, like, I was either going to play both of these cards if I drew a land, or I was going to play a creature and a creature which would give me, acti you know, which would make Cradle good off of that mana drain. <coughs> the problem here, though, is that uh, his commander will start recurring this guy back to his hand. So I figured that would be his play, would be the commander. Um, and, and really what I'm trying to do is get to a situation in which I can top deck answers. I can top deck bombs. There are a lot of bombs in the deck that could get me back in the game. There are enough of them that um, as long as I can just stall long enough, I should be okay. But he demonic tutors for a gem palm incinerator, which he cycles to kill my priest. Play I don't agree with at all. So, look what happens. Speaking of bombs, down comes Winter Orb. And then down comes Opposition. And game over, buddy. Triple Mulligan. And all I gotta do now is stall long enough to cast that Natural Order. But he gets a Crypt and a map. So... Even though I thought it was game over, he's suddenly back in the game. And because I'm not finding creatures, I'm not able to, like, keep him completely suppressed. You know, he's hitting land drops, so I I can't... While I'm tapping a land per turn, I just can't keep him shut down. So I keep working on his trying to keep him off a of red mana. He fetches a Barbarian Ring. Luckily, he doesn't have the red to actually activate it. He doesn't have the threshold e either. But with Ghost Quarter, he can fix both problems. And he sees the play, so he does goes quarters is tapped land and then kills my Edric. So now I can't even cast natural order. Unknown unbeknownst to him, he's trying to stop opposition, but unbeknownst to him, he hurt me much worse than um, he could have. So I get wasteland to buy some more time, forcing him to untap a either red or black, but not red and black. <coughs> 
And of course, all I want to do is draw a cheap creature, and there it is. Thank you, Arbor, for winning the game for me. Arbor, tap his land, and natural order him into not Trastodon, deranged hermit. Da -da -da -da. And now the lock is complete. So from here, it's just a matter of, I'm going to just turbo through it, it's just a matter of um, staying in control. And um, I pick up Cradle there because I'm going to replay Cradle next turn. I just stay in control and keep him locked down. Get done with Edric, start drawing cards. And that is it. And my opponent's completely flabbergasted. He says, I don't believe this. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> three mana hand, uh, <laughs> almost nothing in play, and suddenly the game's over pretty awesome stuff. So finally, this was the game from today. It's a very awesome game, I thought, because my opponent is playing Grand Arbiter and I'm playing Edric. He's got the roll. He's going first, and he comes roaring out the gates with turn one soul ring, chalice for one, and I've got a bird. This is not good. This is really a generally a bad commander, but except for the times when you draw Soul Ring, Mana Vault, Mana Crypt, and except for when you can play it on turn two, right? However, on this turn two, he doesn't play that. He plays Gilded Lotus into a Wall of Omens. So, I mean, uh, he's even faster, and Wall of Omens ensures I'm not going to be getting free, like, cheap Edric hits. However, Wall of Omens does not block Flyers, so I get down with Sword, <coughs> and Nordis is Commander. But 8-8, eight, eight, Flying Vigilant, Indestructible, all your cards are indestructible cards. Those block swords. Flyers, rather. So what do you do here? The first thing I do is I get myself an island. Next I play Draga and Metalkin Shackles. There's no way I'm going to get 8. I actually have exactly 8 islands, but there's no way I'm going to get 8 islands into play before I'm dead to that flyer. Um, but he, Tamiyo, is my uh, shackles anyway, which I agree with, because, I mean, I could potentially take the wall. And, more importantly, I could take his commander. And he plays Luminarch Ascension, which I totally disagree with. He should have played his commander there. Um, okay, so. And I take eight. And I draw Mox. Usually, uh, always an awesome card, really. Um, only good mid-game win. You've got Edric going. Not good here. So I upgrade Draga and cast Edric. And then equip my bird in preparation for the play that I am setting up. I mean, it looks like, and he has a sort of light and shadow to go with his angel too. So uh, Grand Arbiter comes down, sword gets on his guy, he smashes me for 10, gains 3 life, and he's going to be able to recur dead things. Not that I'm going to be killing too much with an army of indestructible stuff, leaving him with exactly one card in hand. So it looks like I've lost this game. Tamiyo taps down with Edelkin Shackles. But, fortunately for me, although top decking card there is awesome and will come into play at some point, I am setting up a much stronger play. And here it is. Four mana for Pod. One mana to Pod away Edric. Fetching... Sower, stealing Avison, and turning all my stuff indestructible, removing his flyer, smashing him for a, one, two points of damage to take the last card in his hand away, which was Day. He could have played it last turn. His guys wouldn't have died, but he wouldn't have the Arbiter in play. His wall and Angel wouldn't have died, and he could have swept away my board. Um, now, though, if he top decks Supreme Verdict or something, no problem, unless it's Terminus or, um, or uh, Hallowed Burial. Uh, until he gets rid of the Angel, it's not an issue. And then with exactly 7 mana, I could cast Karn, except he's got the Grand Arbiter. So I just get down with my commander again and say go. And he top decks land, but uh, draws 2 cards off of Tamiyu, correctly realizing that um, he needs to find answers now. And is able to return to dust both pod and sword. Big bummer. Um, I was really hoping to steal uh, one of his guys and then pod it away. And of course take cards out of his hand with sword. But 
he moves his sword of light shadow back over to his arbiter so I can no longer um, shackles it and is able to uh, cast himself a little bit more mana there. However, I've got Cradle. Cradle's got and Karn. Karn gets sort of like Shadow. His commander is now a two power creature. It's now my commander. And I start drawing cards. And this game is about over. So down comes Jace, and because he's uh, empty, well, nearly empty hand, and I've got control of the board, um, I should have actually carned his hand first, that was a really bad misplay, but uh, I go ahead and plus two Jace, uh, and cast uh, Gta. Uh, for some reason, as I recall, I was actually um, a little bit distracted over here, um, I was actually feeding my, my, my baby boy, uh, and I really wasn't paying attention to his hand. Um, but yeah, that was a terrible misplay. Don't, don't, don't do that if you're watching. Don't be like that. Pay better attention than I did. Anyway, so I found the card in his hand. It's just a land. Draw a bunch of cards and uh, play a land and cast Rafael's Elf. And I've got Mystical Tutor stood up, ready to ready to rock and roll, so that I can Mystical at the end of his turn. But it just doesn't matter. And he complains because he he drew too much land, but um. It was all good until uh, until Pod activated. Like I've said many times before, um, if this deck activates, gets an active Pod going, it, it is never lost, ever. So, anyway, um, the change I made is I took out Cryptic Command and I put in Biden of Thassa. And I put in Biden of Thassa because I'm not going to ever complain about having too many cards. But if my opponent plays a Sweeper, and Edric goes away and starts getting more and more expensive, this thing will sit in play, which means all of my creatures have the built-in effect of my commander. So I don't have to I don't have to necessarily replay my commander if this thing's sitting in play. I can just develop and worry about getting my commander down whenever I have a chance to, you know, double up on cards. Uh, the other thing that's cool about this is I can actually fetch it with Tezzeret. Tezzeret comes into play with four counters excuse me so if I've got a situation where I've got I have played um, you know I've played a drain Sherman I untap I let him die I draw Tezzeret I can just cast Tezzeret um, immediately activate it for four fetching the Biden and then you know draw four cards right off the bat boom 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 so uh, being able to do that at will with Tezzeret and drawing the Biden itself gives me additional means to uh, do what this deck wants to be doing. So I think that, although, uh, again, like, I, I did pull Cryptic. I, I love the card. It's a great card. I hate the triple blue. I've hated the triple blue a lot. Um, I know um, Brian Weissman uses it to good effect, but for me it just feels a little bit redundant. I've got Rift for bouncing. I've got plenty of counters. Um, of course, more counters is good, but it just doesn't quite... It just doesn't quite feel like as powerful as, you know, Biden here. And while I could replace a different card for it, that's the only card that really comes up as far as being eligible to Snap. I mean, it could probably replace Cryptic... Put, replace Snap with Cryptic. But I'm really liking Snap. Snap is powerful. Early on, it does a ton. And it, late game, it generates mana, so I... I'm not really sure that I am willing to do that. It's pretty interesting that a card like Snap, which seems so innocuous, is a card that I would actually consider playing over a Cryptic Command, but in this case, it, it actually is. Um, strange. Anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed those games, uh, including the pop modest pause in the middle, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.